Hello, Ecto-Sage here on the Sage channel. And I'm here today to show you this ship I'm calling the King's Cane. It is a massive ship for an unnamed empire whose king or emperor would sick this ship upon anyone who dares betray him, as if to hit them over the head with his cane, to reach out and slap them across the face for betraying him or the empire itself. The ship is all vanilla. There are no mods in it at all. I have a few mods in the world just for some testing stuff, but the ship itself is completely vanilla. And you can see it is a rather large and long ship with four large nacelles at the back of it as well as some thruster components in the central section as well. Along the whole ship, if you can see past the, let's hover up so we can have that lens flare. If you can see past the lens flare, you can see it's a pretty massive ship with two large, well, almost arms reaching out from a center section, and each arm is covered in a million and one turrets. In fact, we can even fly in a little bit closer, and I'm using our arrow keys to be able to maneuver the camera in a slightly more smooth fashion. And you can see it's set up in such a way, there we go, we're still moving a bit quick, but it's set up in such a way so that all the turrets should have a pretty good firing line if they're all aiming straight out. You'll also notice the Gatling turrets that are stuck in there as well. Those are mainly positioned to be able to take out fighters that might be trying to fly down either this large open area here, or if we were to buzz our camera back up here and stop moving because it's probably getting a bit sickening, all that movement, you can see we have the turrets aiming straight up at us right now. So if anything gets above this, it should be taken out fairly easily with all of those Gatling turrets. If we're to go ahead and do a proper tour of this ship, we'd start here at the hangar bay, which we'll be getting to in a minute. And above that, we have a nice observation deck. And if we carry on all the way up, we have the bridge at the very top with two pieces of heavy armor on top of it. The entire ship is built out of heavy armor. I started building this ship quite some time ago, probably halfway through last year, and it has gone through an assortment of iterations, but only recently have I actually decided to sit down and finish off its interiors and just make sure it should be working correctly. The back of these nacelles, you will notice, has these pinched exit points, which should allow for the thrust to come out of them while making it a little bit harder for enemies to directly target them. Same goes for the central section back here, but you can see this does have a few turrets on it, so if anything gets directly behind the ship, it should have some chance to still unload upon that enemy vessel. If we were to go ahead and start our interior tour now, we'll fly ourselves back to the front of the ship, teleport ourselves in, and go ahead and take a look about inside of it. Remember, this whole ship is vanilla, and it actually is survival ready, with all the piping hooked up for all of those turrets. So, plop ourselves in here, into the small hangar bay, you can see, about the size of uh, three blocks wide. So it's just big enough for, let's say, one little landing craft with the crew to dock and land in here and unload people. But if you go ahead and head through this airlock right here, we can go ahead and uh, press these buttons to go ahead and make sure we set the airlock to depressurize and close the interior door over there. So that should be good enough. I don't have the lights set up to change color, unfortunately. They always say it's sort of orange. But we can go ahead and press this button now and pressurize ourselves a pretty standard airlock. But one I'm very happy with the looks of. Anyway, we'll head through here, and unlike a lot of my ships, this ship does not have interior symmetry in the same way, at least not for the walkable areas. If, as you'll see, we go up a stairwell right away, and it's a bit of a switchback before doing these loops heading up and up and up with a very, very sterile lighting. We finally get to this point, and we have our main medical bay, or I say our main medical bay, our bottom floor medical bay where you can spawn here and easily enough get back to the hangar bay or head to any other floor of the ship. And we'll find another one of these later on before we get to the bridge. And then if we head up here, we'll actually enter into a hallway. So we're now going back from the back of the living area all the way to the front. And you can see we have a few rooms set up here. Like I said, this is a vanilla ship. So there aren't going to be any of my beds or desks that I usually put around. It's just completely vanilla. You can go ahead and fill these out however you please. So you make those office rooms, main commander rooms, or sleeping areas, or imagine one of them is a mess hall. This is that lower observation deck, and you can see it is quite the sight to see. Well, to see our gigantic beastie sitting here, almost like a background from a game or something. Anyway, heading through this door, this will now take us up and into the rest of the ship. And I've switched back to the arrow keys, oddly enough. 
and we'll get to here. We won't go up that stairwell yet. We're going to go into here, which is our main engineering area, which doesn't really have our reactors or anything, but what it does have is an assortment of assemblers. Four of them right here, all fully upgraded, and an oxygen vent right there. And if we were to go into here, you have a nice access path leading straight up where you have our refineries. So you have four refineries stuck in here. Unfortunately, one of them is a little bit well, impossible to access, but the other three, those two right there and the one to our left right here, should be pretty easily accessed. Anyway, let's go ahead and head back out here. Make sure we close that door. I said closeth doorth. Thank you, with. Alrighty. And we'll keep on heading up this stairwell now into the rest of the ship, which I think I've said maybe three times now. We do have another airlock here, which oddly enough is the airlock that's going to lead us into, like I just said before, the rest of the ship. This one being a lot more direct than the other ones, which led us basically to just more hallways. This is actually a large open crawl space of all things. As you can see, we come out in here and it's just a jumbled mess of gyroscopes because this ship takes an awful, awful lot to keep flying. And they have changed their lighting in the game somewhat recently, so you do get very, very dark areas now, which I actually like quite a bit. I mean, look how ominous this is. Oh, there's a wall there and... Oh, now, since we are in pretty much complete darkness, it's gone to pretty much complete darkness. I love that. Anyway, turning on our flashlight, you can see it's a pretty hefty ship, and there's a lot of crawl spaces around here where you can get to a, a fairly diff distant areas, especially if we were to, like, let's fly this way, and go ahead and look down this way. This leads all the way down the entire length of the large arms reaching out. We can actually go ahead and try to fly down this without hitting anything. Who knows if we'll... Oh, there we go, the far wall. So it is quite the flight to get all the way down this ship, if that gives you a better sense of the scale of it. And you can actually see that we could fly down here, and there are little access areas where we can repair pipes or anything if they go wrong. Almost looks like the attic of someone's house here. Now let's go ahead and buzz ourselves down here. Ta-da! And fly all the way back to where we were before. Which is, of course, quite the flight, isn't it? It's almost like I'm looping the footage. But there we go, we finally made it back here. And you will see we have another reactor here. Actually, I think we have, yeah, two of them, three of them. And then some jump drives stuck in here. In the nacelles, I'll do a cutaway in a little bit. And you'll see that those are also full of more maneuvering equipment. Uh, let's go ahead, buzz ourselves around just a little bit more to let you see everything that's in here. And show that you can access pretty much everything from this interior flying area. Just make sure you bring some oxygen bottles and hydrogen bottles with you. Because there is... Well, limited artificial gravity in here, and not really any way to walk about. If we fly back to this pipe, it's not supposed to be there. There we go. And carry on. It actually leads us back to a big open area back here, or you can see just a little bit of excess piping that leads to those back turrets we've seen. And right here, we had just gone past this. We have a gravity drive right here using these two gravity generators, and then all of these artificial mass blocks here. Slight overkill, probably. And uh, those will basically go ahead and launch the ship up to whatever speed it likes. You can also see we're flying past a lot of these oxygen tanks. And above them are oxygen generators. So we have a surplus of that. And as long as you have ice, you will always have hydrogen. No hydrogen tanks in this ship as far as I remember. Anyway, this is the other side. You'll see it's not exactly the same. Because these are where all the refineries are behind this wall here. Whereas on this side, it just had all of those gyroscopes. Anyway, let's go ahead Get ourselves back into the livable area of the ship. Pressurize this again. There we go. And pop that door open, thank you very much. And now we'll start heading our way up these switchback stairwells, which will lead us up to one a livable floor right here. But you can see it's quite the odd stairwells in this ship. Not my standard stuff, but it's just more rooms. And a lot of the reason for these stairwells bumping up and stuff is because I wasn't able to make just huge rooms with the symmetry I usually please without, well, with any amount of space. The space is very odd is what I'm trying to say in this ship. I didn't have enough room to really stretch things like I usually did, but it also wasn't so closed off or small that I couldn't put something in. So I just had them make do with the space I had. Anyway, we're in another airlock right here. I just realized I probably should have put in a few more panels like this. Boop, boop. Make it look a bit more like the one before. Hmm, who knows, might have that in the version that ends up on the workshop. But anyway, we can head out this door. I think I forgot to depressurize this. Yes, I did. Now I vented it. Oops. Hmm, and we didn't have any depressurization effect. They might have gotten rid of that to a 
cut down on lag. But anyway, you can see we've came out of the ship right there at the little back access port. So it's got a few different ways into the ship. Oh, and before I forget, there is a way to resupply this ship if we were to buzz all the way down here to the bottom right there. Ta-da! One little access port so you can connect your ships up and, well, transfer materials from that one tiny little port on this huge monstrosity of a craft. No real way to get inside those nacelles, by the way. Just, uh... Hope they don't get shot up, eh? Anyway, let's go ahead and head into the rest of the ship. Bum, ba, da, and head all the way back down here because there's no easy way to get back to the main stairwell. You have to actually go down that whole hallway and head up another floor or two. And this should be the top floor of the craft right here. And you can see it's just a long hallway because, well, basically I had put the stairwell at the front of the ship when I should have put it at the back, but there was a bunch of reactors that were sort of blocking me from doing that the way I wanted. Anyhow, you can see this is the secondary medical room right here. We can even turn off our lights. We don't really need those anymore. Which leads us to the computer core, where you can see we have a bunch of computer core set up. So if you want to use any programming code, you can. And above each of these, there is a timer block. So if you need timer blocks, they're already there for you. And then we're into the bridge, which I am really quite happy with. It's an interesting sight to see, I would believe. You can tell by the heavy armor on the walls, it's a bit thin wall, but it does its job pretty well. And there you go, there's the main bridge view of everything. Not exactly the best view in the world, but at the same time, fairly interesting. And now, if we were to go ahead and test this ship's movement, and go ahead and do a control 2 to get to the secondary number, press a 1 to turn on those artificial masses, and turn on number 2 to begin accelerating with that artificial mass drive, the gravity drive. And see, it's pretty good at getting us up to speed lickety-split. And of course, we can turn that off, and now we're coasting at that high speed. We can press Z and start slowing ourselves down with our standard inertial dampers, or we can use the number three button and do our reverse. And once again, you can see it slows us up pretty well. Very well, actually, I would say. Anyway, that's that for actually showing you just the ship interiors and overall view of the exterior, which I think it's a pretty impressive thing. Let's go ahead and do a quick look at the cutaways of this ship. And to facilitate showing you those cutaways, I had to reload the world because I have these cutaways here and you'll notice our frame rate has dropped quite a bit, actually. And so if I'd buzz up here, you can see all of the, there we go, piping and stuff we had flown past before in all the million one gyroscopes. So if you were a bit confused at just how much that was, there you go, now you know. And of course, we have a lot of cargo containers in there that I've actually filled up with a little bit of ammo, each one of them as well. Missiles and Gatling gun ammos and all of that fun stuff. And like I said, everything's piped up. I had to cut away little bits of it to show all this, but if I was to stick my camera in here, you can see there are pipes connecting everything. Not just pretty much everything, everything should be hooked up correctly. Anyway, if we were to buzz up here, you'll see some of the cutaways. I think it's just cool, worth showing, just when you see cutaways of ships like that. And you can see behind the walls just how many gyroscopes there were that you didn't see when we were buzzing around inside the crawl spaces of the ship, because I did pack this ship pretty full of stuff. It does have a few open spaces like this right here, which is just nothingness. But overall, the ship is pretty heavily stuffed full of just, well, stuff. And you might notice these thrusters back here, which I didn't really point out before, but these just had slits along them as well, similar to the rear thrusters. And if you want to see inside those nacelles, I did cut one of the nacelles in half right here. And you see we did have, well, thrusters behind thrusters stuck in there as well as more and more gyroscopes stuck in to allow the ship to accelerate pretty well, even without the gravity drive. And some more jump drives, which by the way, these do go pretty much all the way across the ship. If we were to cut that open, you can see. And remember, this is only half of them. I turned to the other ones to cut this in half. And you can see the ship here, if we were to see it cut in two, you can see our gravity drives that were here. Some more gyroscopes, tons of those. And then, of course, as I mentioned, the gravity drive bulk before all that oxygen fun fun stuff. Before we get to the main area of the ship right here with uh, all of its different stairwells and floors and every other little silly room and passageway we've flown about when we did our tour thing. Yep, I think that's pretty nifty to see. Anyway, with that done, I think I mentioned... Uh, if I didn't mention it, let's mention it now. It's time for a little combat test, don't you think? So really quickly, I'm going to cut ahead to where we have a combat set up, a scenario of sorts. 
Alrighty, so in the sake of sim speed, I've gone ahead and put in three of our D1 warships here. These are those rather simplistic warships that I designed just for sort of weapons tests and ship tests. They do have their shields currently disabled, as I didn't have that mod in the world. Uh, just the turret mod for these guys, and I put them pretty close, because otherwise, well, they have greater range than our ship here. And uh, since it's a vanilla ship against three modded ships with some of the most powerful, awesome get cannons in the game, it should be a bit of a show. I'm in the main seat here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and press K, pause the game. I said press K. All right, so press K, pause the game. Turns out the pause the game thing doesn't show up if uh, you have your uh, UI disabled. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and go to each of the warships and we'll set them to be owned by pirates while the game is paused and now we can go ahead exit this screen hide our UI okay can't hide your UI while the game's paused but unpause it and we should have a heck of a battle in front of us And uh, because that's all kind of chaotic and insane and laggy, I've paused the game so we can just take a better look at what the hell was going on there. So you can see, uh, oh dear, yeah, we seem to have also adjusted our turning speed. You know, rotates a lot quicker. But anyway, a lot of those ships went ahead and decided they wanted to blow the crap out of our Sage Station. I should have seen that one coming. But you can see the missile bombardment here has been, um, well, pretty hefty. I actually suspect that, um, Something's going on where these missiles aren't doing as much damage as I would have expected, considering the enemy ships haven't just instantaneously disintegrated. Uh, you can see, though, that is a awful, awful lot of firepower coming off of our main ship. Yeah, the King's Cane is, um, well, it's being flung at full force towards the enemy's noggin. That said, these modded weapons are pretty dang powerful, and even though this first ship here... Oh boy, that camera spins real quick now. And with all those beautiful missiles coming at it, has taken some serious, serious damage. And this one over here has pretty much been vaporized. The far ship is still mostly, well, fairly functional. And we've actually taken a massive mountain of damage here. That said, though, we did successfully disable two of the enemy ships pretty well. And uh, we'll go ahead and let this carry on out. We'll see how much more damage is done before the enemy vessels are fully disabled. Alrighty, well, it looks like our sim speed has recovered and the majority of the battle is over. Uh, you will see I rotated the ship around here in the hopes of bringing up all these other weapons uh, to fire upon our enemies for fear that, um, well, a lot of our main ones would have been destroyed on the left side there. Oddly enough, our mouse has shown up. Oddly enough, uh, it, ooh, dearie. So they shredded a fair amount of our ship as well. And suddenly I'm all tapped again. That's odd. Uh, yeah. An awful lot of our ship got shredded by those. And it, it honestly looks like here... I suspect the turrets decided to be idiots and blow themselves up again. Meaning the line of sight system still is, uh, well, not working perfectly. That's what it would appear at least. If we were to go ahead, though, and uh, inspect the other side, you will see... I guess it was probably the right thing for me to do, though, to rotate the ship around, because we had lost an awful lot of the missile alerts that were on this side 
And honestly, a large portion of the ship is just missing now, floating here in a million pieces. As for our enemies, they have been completely and utterly decimated. Success, our big massive ship was able to annihilate um, those three baddies. But they did do an awful lot of damage. For the simplicity of those ships, those weapons really are powerful. Looks like modded weapons like that are the way to go, or maybe it should be vanilla versus vanilla. Anyway, guys and gals, that is it for this video. I hope you liked that. Again, it'll be up on the Steam Workshop if you want to go ahead and get your hands on the blueprint for this large vanilla ship. Thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Ta-ta.